Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebbing. This is the first video tutorial in our How to Make a T-Shirt Quilt series. This was actually the very first video tutorial series I did on YouTube. It was long before I had a set, long before I had a business. It was just my husband filming me in one take on a cell phone camera in our living room. So we've come a long way. We got 100,000 subscribers now. We figured it was time to redo it. And if you follow along in time with us, we will release the video so that way you can finish in order to have these done by graduation in May. We're gonna have these video tutorials up forever so you can make a film anytime and make a t-shirt quilt. But especially I know right now is a good time to make them. People are making them for graduations retirements, things like that. And so this is a really good time to just follow along with us step by step. We're gonna take you through everything you need to know, but today we're gonna to start with the supplies that we need. So make sure that you are followed along on our email list. That way you're gonna get everything that you need in order to be able to create one of these for a special gift for someone that you love or just for yourself and then we'll go from there. We're gonna take a little bit closer look at these quilts in a later video. For right now, I'm gonna move them out of the way and we're gonna take a look at what we need. Obviously, first and foremost, you need a set of t-shirts. Now, we have a pattern available on our website, shop.quiltagsnamas.com, which has figured out all the math you need for it. But like, for example, the one that I'm going to make here is a lap size quilt and that takes 16 blocks. Now that does not necessarily mean 16 t-shirts because sometimes you can take like pocket squares and you can cut up four pocket squares and they can go together to make one 12 inch finished block. So let me show you an example of that. All right, so here I've got two shirts. This one was from a trip to QuiltCon in Savannah, Georgia, and we ate at a place called the Pirate's House. And so we've got a pocket square on the front, so I can use a six and a half inch square ruler to cut this out. And then on the back is the big design where I'm gonna use this one as one whole 12 and a half inch square. So if I have four of these, which I do for this quilt, then they can make one entire block. So in other words, I only need 15 shirts. I don't need 16, because I'm gonna put four of these together to make a quilt block. So you kinda gotta look at it. You have to decide what you're working with and then pick your favorites because you might not need to use them all for a quilt. And if you don't, then it's, you know, just save them use them in something else, still wear them, but take a look. You know, you ideally, if you've got really big images like this, this is gonna be one quilt block, but you also can mix stuff up. You can create six and a half by 12 and a half inch uh, sections and piece those together. I actually grab an example so you can see what I mean. So this was the original quilt that I made in that very first video tutorial series. These are shirts from my high school days. So for this one, this was a shirt that we had tie dyed and wrote some messages on. And this was my best friend in high school that wrote on there. And this is a pair of shorts where it was a time in life where you could still put writing on your butt and it was totally acceptable. So I have two six and a half by 12 and a half inch blocks that when sewn together make one 12 and a half inch block. Here's another one where these were taken from sleeves where we had writing going down the sleeve. So it worked perfectly for me to be able to put that in as a vertical six and a half by 12 and a half and put that together. So you don't necessarily have to to have all big designs like this. You can make your own. So here's one of those four patches. So I took my six and a half inch square ruler, cut out all those pocket squares, and then sewed them together to create a four patch and made a design from that. So really look your shirts over, make sure you're looking at them and deciding, well, maybe there's more than one element I can use on this. And we're gonna go over cutting your shirts in another video, but just keep that in mind as you're gathering your shirts that say you wanna do a lap quilt and you only have 14 shirts, that might be enough. You just have to look at where the screen printing is, how you can make it work and get that to work there. Next up, you're going to need some woven fusible interfacing that is lightweight. I prefer the Staples Sewing Aids. That is what we have available on our website and we've made it easy for you. If you just search t-shirt quilt interfacing, you're gonna find this and you're gonna be able to select what size quilt you are making and we'll send you enough interfacing for that particular size quilt. Now in the original tutorial, I used some Quilters Grid stuff that was not woven. Um, it was more of, I don't know, it's just, 
it's more of like a home decor or a decor bond type feel to it. And then I switched over to this stuff because it, since it is fabric with a fusible applied to it, it were, is much easier to work with. It makes your fabric slide really nice and it's much thinner, which means it doesn't add as much bulk to your seams because t-shirt quilts can get really bulky. So this is my recommended interfacing and just go to our website. We'll have links in the video description down below, but also if you just search for t-shirt quilt interfacing, you'll be able to get this and be able to select the size you're making and we'll send you just what you need. Obviously there's a lot of basic sewing tools that you're gonna need. We're gonna need a rotary cutter to cut our t-shirts and also a good pair of scissors because we're gonna have to cut up the sides of those t-shirts as well. Now continuing on the theme of cutting, a 12 and a half inch square ruler is a must because we're gonna be cutting Essentially, we're not piecing a quilt block, we are cutting a quilt block out of our t-shirts and then it's just ready to sew together. But t-shirts do not behave like quilter's cotton. They're gonna stretch, they're gonna get out of whack. And so you need to just be able to put this down on your mat, cut around it, and then lift it up and move it. And so if you're trying to do it with any other tool, you're gonna have a really hard time making it work. And along those same lines, this isn't super necessary if you're not gonna do anything with pocket squares, but I like to also have my six and a half inch square ruler on hand uh, because that is also really helpful because when you're laying it out, let's pull this one back out. I mean, essentially, and we'll, um, again, we're gonna go over cutting t-shirts in another video, but you're gonna be able to put this down and get your design absolutely centered and you're gonna know exactly where all the edges are so it's gonna be a lot easier to do that, get it nice and lined up so it's nice and straight with your design and it just is a lot easier to cut something like this when you have the final shape of it because then again, we can just cut around, we don't have to worry about um, things shifting on us so it's a good addition to have, and it has a lot of applications well beyond t-shirt quilts. I use this for all my triangles that I sew for squaring them up. So it's just a good ruler to have in your collection. This is another must have. You need to have an applique pressing sheet. This is what's going to go between your iron and your screen printing. Because if you just set your iron straight on the screen printing when we're fusing that fusible interfacing to the back to stabilize everything so it stays nice and straight when we're sewing it to quilting fabric, you are going to have a mess of screen printing and come up on your iron. So you need to have one of these and it needs to be a Teflon applique pressing sheet because then the fuse or the iron will fuse it down without having the screen printing lift off of your t-shirt and making you very, very sad. We don't want that to happen. So this is a must have. Lastly, you're gonna want some friction gel pens. These come in a couple of different colors. Depending on what uh, color range you have with your shirts, you might wanna have a couple of them on hand. This is for when we're gonna be marking our lines because we're gonna quilt on our home sewing machine for this one. Just do some simple walking foot quilting. And this will help you know where you're going next and everything will be good to go. Now, I, people on the internet, the quilt police, we like to call them, they poo-poo these pens because they say it comes back when it gets cold. Um, well, all you have to do is iron if it ever does and it will go away. And I've got a quilt behind me on here that shipped all over the country and I'm sure was in some cold airplanes and I marked all over that and the lines never came back. But what does happen with this sometimes is if you mark it, and then you press it where the line was, it sometimes is a little bit lighter in that fabric. So if you're quilting right over that line, no big deal, you're not gonna see it ever again. But if you maybe aren't on it exactly, you might have a little bit of a slightly less um, vibrant section of fabric there. So just test it on a piece of the t-shirt that you are not using to make sure that that's not gonna happen on your quilt uh, before you use it or just stitch right over the line that nobody will ever know anyway. So I love these, I use them all the time. They're a fabulous addition to your sewing arsenal. Then obviously we need thread, a sewing machine. We're gonna need a walking foot when we get to the quilting section. These are all things that as a quilter you should have, but if you are finding this not as a quilter, you can get those things wherever you purchased your sewing machine. If you did purchase your sewing machine from a big box store, you may not be able to get things like a walking foot, which we'll cover more in depth when we get to the quilting section that may not be able to be available at a place like Walmart. So find a sewing machine retailer near you where you can get something that's compatible for your machine because it's a must have. You need it for when you're attaching your binding, you need it for when you're quilting. It's a very, very good thing to have. 
All right, so we, and then also batting uh, thread, you know, the basics that we need. Um, every once in a while, I remember we got questions when we first did this. It was at least like 10 years ago, I think. People will be like, can you do this by hand? And the answer is absolutely not. You will never finish in time and it is just too thick a material. You wanna have a sewing machine. So get the best sewing machine that you can afford, borrow one from somebody and go from there. If you really love sewing, we have a video on what to look for when you're getting a sewing machine. The one that I'm using today is the Jubilant by Baby Lock. I don't, I'm not represented by Baby Lock. I get no money for saying this. That is a very good basic entry level sewing machine. It runs about 450, 500. Um, unfortunately, the singers and things like that that you get at a big box store, they're not made the way they were when our grandmothers had the big heavy metal ones. They're not gonna last forever and always. And so unfortunately, unless you're willing to spend about four or $500 on a sewing machine, you're gonna have issues where your sewing machine is going to be kind of fighting with you on a few things. It's gonna wanna eat your fabric. Sometimes it gets sucked that under the feed dogs. Um, and that doesn't mean that if all you can afford right now is a $100 sewing machine from Walmart that you shouldn't do this. Everybody's gotta start somewhere. Go get it, get used to it, have some fun, but know that if you're constantly fighting with your machine, that that doesn't mean that you are a bad sewer or that you're doing anything wrong. It just means that when you're able to, you should consider upgrading to a machine that is more built for the today's sewer and built to last and not just be built to use until it breaks and then throw it away. Um, a good sewing machine is one that you're gonna clean, you're gonna take care of, you're gonna use for many, many years. And that is what you want to look for in a sewing machine. And usually that's gonna come from an independent retailer where you can also take it to get its service, where you can get a class on how to use it. So that is definitely what you want to look for when you're ready for that step. But if you've just got you know, your grandma's old Kenmore, go get it cleaned up and, and take it for a ride. You can make that work for sure. So, all right, so that's what you need for supplies. Of course, you need the pattern as well. You can get that on our website. And if you get an applique pressing sheet and interfacing, we're gonna give you that pattern for free. So make sure that you get those goodies as well from us. It's a great way to say thanks for all of these lovely videos. And I completely forgot to mention that we need some fabric as well. We're gonna be covering that in the next video tutorial. I think a lot of times when people make t-shirt quilts, they think, oh, I have all the t-shirts, I have everything I need, and, and no, you do not. You are gonna need other things. You're gonna need your batting. You're gonna need your interfacing to stabilize everything. You're gonna need the tools in order to make it properly. Um, so there definitely is a materials cost in it, well beyond the t-shirts that have already been provided. But in the next video, we're gonna talk about how to choose fabric to go in your t-shirt sashing. And I'm actually gonna pick mine for the quilt that I'm gonna make on camera live with you guys. So that'll be fun. All right, so go check out all the things. We're gonna have a page on our website where you can see all the videos in one place. It's just how to make a t-shirt quilt and you can watch this forever and always. But again, if you follow along with us in real time, you can get this done in time for graduation parties this May. All right, until next time, happy quilting. Cool